The post-Olympic crash is real, guys. It was something that was so far out of my thoughts that I would ever have to deal with that problem when I was competing that I completely pushed it out of the back of my mind. I said, there's no way that's going to happen to me. I've got everything figured out. And if I do encounter any kind of challenges, they aren't going to be that big and I can handle it all on my own. And what I want to tell you today is that if you're an athlete competing today at any level, but especially if you're an athlete that's considering or are going to Pyeongchang or the Paralympic Games, heading into the Olympics or the Paralympics, it's to understand that you're very susceptible to dealing with post-Olympic depression more than you even realize. And that this same problem would apply to any other athletes who are investing so much of themselves and their identity into just who they are like as an athlete and what they're trying to accomplish. Because I get people coming to me all the time speaking about from a, a varsity level with um, colleges or universities and they don't, they're already like cut from the team before they even get to the level they were hoping to get to and they're just completely devastated. So what I want you to start thinking about is, you know, right now you might feel like you're too busy, that it's not important or not important right now to think about and understand that trying to work on this later is in fact too late to deal with the situation because you wanna be proactive in the situation of dealing with this that can happen to you when, when, you're, when your games are over or when you don't meet your goal, okay? So just to give you some perspective again, like um, in my case, I played five years with Team Canada. Um, we went to, I played in Sochi. We helped earn uh, a bronze medal for Canada in our sport. And I thought it was, everything was gonna be good. You know, I thought it was gonna be done. I thought my speaking gigs were gonna go up. I was gonna get full fee out the door every time and I was gonna publish my book and I wasn't gonna have any trouble writing my book and then things were just gonna be sailing. I had money in the bank, I had 20 grand saved up, um, I had zero bad debt at the time and I, then I ended up getting into a relationship in that summer following that quickly fell apart, I quickly ran out of money, I stopped training because in my mind I'm like, the Olympics are done, I can go do what I want, so I was starting to hang out and party more and less in the gym and crappier eating habits and I just started to spiral downward. And when I got into this post-Olympic depression, it was so hard to get out of. In fact, I had to hit rock bottom where I was in the emergency psychiatric ward at St. Joseph's Hospital in Hamilton before in that moment, I was able to snap out of it. And we'll save, we'll save that story for another time. But what I want to do today is share with you three ideas of what you can and or should be thinking about today to help prepare yourself for when that day will come. Because it's going to come. Number one, uh, is what I want you to start thinking about is start brainstorming, start thinking ahead of what do you want your life to look like? What could your life look like following sport? Because you're gonna have several opportunities, especially if you're already succeeding at a high level because so many employers see the intangibles of what an athlete can bring to the table from your dedication, your attention to detail, your, your work ethic, and that's a good thing. Like you have more opportunities than you realize and so start thinking about what am I doing today that could help me in the future become that other person that I might want to be if this thing doesn't work out. And just journal those things, you know, write them down, um, start to make some connections like this, this time leading up to the games or when you're in sport and you're excelling is one of your very best times to network because people are so engaged with what you're doing and they want to be a part of that journey. So make sure you leverage these opportunities these days today to start that networking that can actually benefit you beyond sport. Number two is I want to start thinking about is, is uh, acceptance. And what I mean by that is I, I need you to start, I need you to accept the outcome before it happens. I need you to accept failure before you fail. I need you to accept a second place finish if you don't make it. I need you to accept an injury before the injury happens because those things are all a very real possibility. And if you are you know, being naive, thinking that it's not gonna happen to you or that you have this picture perfect moment in mind of how everything's gonna go, we all know, like if you're a real high performance athlete, you're gonna understand that anything can happen. And if you can, in your mind, mentally, not saying don't go for that goal, don't go to be the best ever, 
but just recognize that things can happen, failure might hit you harder than you ever expected it to, and that if and when that does, you've already reminded yourself that, hey, I can get hurt, and or this fourth place finish might have happened and missed the podium by a tenth of a second, that, hey, I did everything I could up until this point, and this is the way the cards played out. The third thing is I want you to think about is uh, what resources you have available, and especially if you're a Canadian athlete, I want you to know about Game Plan. So Game Plan is a program created between the Olympic Committee and the Paralympic Committee to help athletes both during their careers and through the transition period. And what Game Plan does is it helps uh, connect you with employers, it helps provide resources uh, like job, resume writing skills and mental health support. So if you're struggling, you can get connected to, uh, uh, what's it called, a psychiatrist or a psychologist, um, it even help you with your performance. And there's even mentorship now available too. And it's an excellent resource that most of us athletes still don't really even know about or don't think that we need, but it's a valuable tool that you can use. And it's a tool that I use, especially when I was in crisis following Sochi. I called Game Plan, I got help, um, it, spent me, it started off with a couple meetings for uh, a psych, and fortunately with help and support, I was actually able to turn things around in a relatively short period of time. It was only about like three months before I was kind of getting myself really back up on my feet. So I want you to just, I want to kind of help debunk the myth that it's not gonna happen to me, that I've got it all figured out and that I don't need help. And understand that, not that it's for sure gonna happen to you, but there's a very high chance, expectation that you will be struggle, that you may or will struggle in some way. And I just want you to be prepared and be in the best position you can so that when that day comes, either A, prevent it as the best case scenario, or B, understand how you can deal with it. So start thinking ahead. Number one, start thinking ahead of like, what can you do for life after sport? Number two, start thinking about acceptance about like how can you accept the outcome, whether it works out in your favor or not. And number three, uh, look up Game Plan online. I believe it's Game Plan to Match. And I can't remember if it's a .org or .com, but it just hit up on Google Game Plan. And grab a pen and paper, start writing your ideas down, reach out to other athletes, because I know that someone like myself has been through it. We want to help people like you. And uh, give them a call. So hope that you found that helpful. Good luck in the games and any games if you're competing in high, in high performance sport. Um, I wish you all the best and I'll see you soon.